We frequently get asked how to create trimmed hedges and topiary using Forest Pack. In this tutorial, we'll look at two possible approaches. First, using pre-built hedge components that fit together like a jigsaw, and secondly, how to use hedge volumes modeled using standard polygon tools to scatter leaves and branches using Forest Pack Pro. And then to finish up, we'll include a bonus section that explains how to create a rail clone style that can be used as a scatter surface for Forest Pack to create a fully parametric setup. Several libraries include hedge models that can be dropped into the scene and used immediately. In addition to speed of setup, this approach has the advantage that library hedge models tend to include the trunk and the branches, so if the interior of the hedge is likely to be seen, then this is the way to go. Using these models is pretty straightforward. Just pick them from the scene and then use tree editor mode to position them exactly where they're needed. Here's an example of how to do this. Create a new forest pack object, change the mode to manual and click in the scene somewhere you'd like a hedge to be planted. But don't worry about this too much because it can easily be changed later. Then go to the geometry rollout and add the hedge geometry to the items list. You can either pick it from the scene or as in this demo, use an object from the library. Several third party libraries include hedge models, although for this tutorial I'm using models from HQ Plants Volume 1. If there are several variations, as there are here, add them too. This will help you to break up any visible repetition. Once you've done that, go to the tree editor rollout and click the tree icon to enter editing mode. In this mode, new hedges can be added, deleted, moved, rotated and scaled. To add a new hedge, either choose a specific model from the drop down list, or randomize or sequence them by selecting these corresponding modes. And then once the mode selected, to create a new hedge, just click the add button and then click in the scene to place your new object. Once your hedges are created, they can easily be manipulated by turning off add mode and then using Max's standard translation, rotation and scale tools. Hedges can also be cloned by holding down shift while you transform them. In this way, you can very quickly assemble a scene. Objects that have been placed can also be swapped for other models after the fact by simply changing them from the drop down options in the properties group. It's also possible to randomize the selection by picking hedges in the viewport and then clicking randomize. One issue with using stock models is that occasionally repetition can be visible. So to help reduce this effect, turn on enable horizontal mirror in the transform rollout. And in addition, you can create more variety by randomly rotating the objects by 180 degrees. There's not a simple button for this, but the easiest way to do it is to set the Z rotation max to 180 degrees, then turn on the probability curve, click edit, and then adjust the graph. We want to return values close to zero and 180. So you need to edit the probability curve so that it has high points only at the very, very beginning and the very end of the curve. To add more variety, you could also randomize maps using forest color, but we'll tackle that in the next section. If you prefer, instead of manually assembling the hedges in your scene, you can also distribute them along a spline. To do this, in the tree editor rollout again, go to the creation tools group. Click on the picker button next to along a spline and select a spline from the scene. Then enter a spacing value. This should be the length of the hedge section or slightly less if you'd like some overlap. For these hedges in this example, 200 centimeters works quite well. If you don't want to delete the existing hedges, make sure you turn off delete existing items. If you want to get rid of the existing hedges and replace them with the new ones from the spline, leave it on. And then finally click create to add hedges along the spline. And using hedge models, it's really as easy as that. Assuming you have access to a library of decent hedge objects for many scenarios, this is the fastest way to populate scenes. However, problems arise with this technique when the hedge shapes in the library don't match those required by the scene. Although many hedge shapes are available, they may not always suit the project. The hedge sizes required by the scene may also not match those in the library. With library items, hedges are limited to increments of the size of the hedge geometry. Sometimes also repetition can become obvious. And finally, if hedges are curved or form other shapes not easily created by distributing fabricated parts, you may have to go in a different direction. In these situations, creating your own shapes by scattering leaves and branches on a hedge volume using Forest Pack Pro may be more appropriate. And it's certainly the more flexible approach. Here's how it can be done. 
In this part of the tutorial, we'll use our own volumes with Forest Pack to scatter leaves and branches on their surfaces. In this scene, for example, we have several head shapes. Some are simple rectangles, some are topiary balls, there's a curved hedge at the back here, and there's even some cones and obelisks. To create these hedges, there are three things that should be considered. Firstly, geometry, secondly, the scatter settings, and finally, the materials. Let's take a look at each in turn. So the geometry to be scattered is fairly straightforward to create. In these examples, I've modeled just a few branches using GrowFX, but it's also common to extract leaves and branches from your existing plant models. In the downloads for this tutorial, there are two types of hedge model, each with three variations. These differ slightly for variety, but crucially also include differences in leaf density. Hedges are often not evenly covered with the same density of leaves, and some sparser patches are visible through which the branches can be seen. By scattering occasional branches with fewer leaves, we are able to simulate that effect. In addition, enough branch should be included so that we can give the impression that the hedge has an interior and it's not simply hollow. Also, the pivot should be moved to the top of the plant. This is perhaps the most important step. It's tempting and seems logical to place the pivot at the bottom of the branch. But this introduces a couple of issues. First of all, it places the object on the surface of the geometry, making the size of the hedge larger than the volume. This makes it harder to visualize when you're modeling the hedge. Another problem occurs if you want to randomize the size of the leaves to add some variety, as you'll also introduce unevenness to the surface of the hedge. This is fine if you're creating a wild hedge, but not so good if the hedge is supposed to be freshly trimmed. Similarly, random rotation will cause surface unevenness as well. To resolve this, therefore, it's good to move the pivot to the top of the hedge so that it acts as the pivot for the scale and rotation operations as well, maintaining more accurately the volume defined by the scatter surface. The second geometry we need to consider are the scatter surfaces themselves. These are also straightforward. In most cases, you should avoid 90 degree angles, so I'd champ for hard edges, as well as removing polygons from the bottom of objects, unless for some reason you need branches protruding downwards from the bottom of the hedge. But most importantly, you need to create evenly distributed UVWs. Forrest uses these to place the distribution map, so they need to be approximately the same density across the model. Not necessarily seamless, but roughly the same texel size. The size should also match for surfaces that will be used in the same forest object. It makes it much easier to get the correct distribution map settings. You'll notice on the larger hedges, the curved one at the back for example, that the UVWs are randomly offset. This is important as several of Forest Pack's features like clustering, choosing scatter items and random transforms are generated internally based on an item's position in UVW space. Randomizing UVW offsets therefore avoids any visual repetition. Later on we'll demonstrate how RailClone can be used to create hedge volumes that offset UVWs for you automatically. So we've got our surfaces, now let's start to create the scatter. Create a new Forest Pack object by picking any of the hedges from the scene. Go over to the Modify panel and in the surfaces rollout, you should pick all the surfaces from the scene that you wish to use as a hedge volume. Now go to the geometry rollout and add the six hedge branches we looked at earlier. Change the color ID of hedge 1 to red and the color ID of hedge 2 to green. We'll use these later to create clusters. We also want far fewer hedge 2 branches, we're thinking of this as a kind of invasive plant in this hedge, so we'll reduce the probability for these items to 15%. Remember that changing these probabilities will give you some quite different effects, so do feel free to experiment. You could for example also reduce the probability of the branches with fewer leaves to avoid the hedges looking too threadbare. Now go back to the surface rollout and change the mode to UV. This allows you to scatter objects on the surface of a geometry object. The default XY mode only scatters on polygons that face upwards. Turn off UV transform align, and then look at the direction slider. This controls how the branches are oriented in relation to the Z axis and the surface normal. By default, the slider is set to 100, causing all the branches to point directly upwards, which is correct at the top, but not on the sides of the hedge. If we change the slider to zero so that they follow the surface normal, the sides still aren't correct. Ideally, the branches on the side should angle up at about 45 degrees, and the branches on the top should point straight up. This can be achieved by setting the direction slider to 50, which blends equally between the surface normal and the world Z axis. So now we'll sort out the distribution. To make it easier to visualize our changes, go to the display rollout and turn on Use Color ID. The color IDs we selected earlier in the geometry rollout are now used to tint the points cloud.
In the distribution rollout, change the distribution map to full. This map creates the maximum number of scattered items and it's ideal for high density items like this. Bran decrease the density value until the branches are close enough that there's no gaps between them. In this scene, a value of about 570 centimeters works well, but yours may be different. Finally, turn on density clusters. This will create groups of plants with the same color ID, so it will look as though there are two hedges competing for space. Adjust the size, blurry edge, and the noise values to get the desired effects. The settings I used were 70 centimeters for the side, 100% for roughness, 75% for blurry edge, and 5% for noise. Finally, we'll add some randomization. So go to the transforms rollout and enable translation, rotation, and scale. And then just make a few subtle changes. For translation, use minus five to five for all three axes. If you did want a more ragged and less trimmed looking hedge, you can use a larger range for the Z axis. For rotation, change the X and Y axis minimum to minus 10 and the maximum to 10. And finally, you can leave the scale settings at their defaults. And that's the scatter set up. We can now move on to randomizing the materials to add even more variety. So in this section, we'll look at randomizing maps using forest color. Before we change anything though, let's look at how the current material that uses a single bitmap used for all the leaves looks. Far too uniform. For greater realism, it's a good idea to randomize between several leaf textures using forest color. Leaves on hedges are seldom all this healthy, so to add more realism and simulate some dying leaves, we use four types of leaf map. One that's fully green and healthy, one that's just starting to yellow, one that's fully yellow, and finally a dead brown leaf. These are wired to a forest color map. If we just render it with the forest color map default settings, you can see there are far too many dead and dying leaves in the hedge, although it might be useful for an autumn scene. So we need to reduce the number of brown leaves. We do this using the probability values found next to the map's name in the forest color map. We need very few yellow and brown leaves, so I'd reduce the probability values between one and 2%. Again, feel free to experiment with these values to get the look that you're after. To add further variation, you can randomly darken the leaves. To do this, you turn on Tint Override and we'll change the blending mode to Multiply. Change the variation slider to Element. Each leaf will now take its own random value. Change the random strength from and to values to 100%. And finally, change the gradient so that the start is white and the end is just a light gray. These leaves are already quite dark, so we don't want to change them too much. Finally, we can add some broader color changes in larger patches on the hedge to break up the uniformity. To do this, um, we create a noise map and wire the forest color map to the first input, and then wire the same forest color map to the second input via a color correction node. Then make some changes using the color correct map. In this example, I'll just lighten the map slightly by increasing the gamma, as well as slightly increasing the saturation. Now in the noise map settings, set the coordinate source to world XYZ, change the size to 90, and adjust the noise threshold high and low settings to get a decent effect that's noticeable but without being too jarring. And if you need to, duplicate this setup for any other forest colour maps connected to the material. If you render now you'll have a lot more natural variation compared to our starting image. To finish up this tutorial, it's worth looking at how rail clone can be used at the surface for forest pack. This is ideal for creating hedges as both scatter and hedge volume can remain fully parametric. First of all, let's consider the source geometry. We need only three segments for this setup, a start, a middle and an end. Just like we saw earlier, the geometry has been UV mapped, corners have been chamfered and the bottoms been removed. So we'll use these to build a style, create a new rail clone object and click the style editor button to open the node based editor. This is created using a linear array, so add an L1S generator. We're going to drive this using splines, so add a spline node, pick a spline from the scene, and then wire it to the generator's spline input. Create a new segment node, pick the starting geometry from the scene and wire the node to the start input. Add another segment node, pick the middle geometry from the scene and wire it to the default input. And then finally, another new segment node, pick the end geometry from the scene and wire this to the end input. And that's more or less it. It's helpful though to be able to adjust the hedge on the z-axis so that you can raise it above the ground slightly. Due to the angle of the branches on the sides and the pivot position, the um, branches will extend down to the ground and look as though the hedge is actually planted. So 
We want to be able to raise this whole style up and to do that, right click on the generator and export the geometry Z offset parameter. Then create a new numeric node, set the mode to scene units and wire this to the Z offset input. You can now adjust this value from the modify panel. Earlier we mentioned that randomizing the UVWs is useful for disguising repetition. Unfortunately, this is something that RailClone can do automatically using a UVW XForm operator. So we'll create one of these nodes and then go to the Properties panel and change the random offset for the U, V and the W axis, uh, change the minimum to minus one and change the maximum to one. And then we just need to duplicate and wire this UVW XForm node between all the existing segments. And there's one last thing we need to do to use this as a surface for Forest Pack. You need to disable the instancing engine by going to the display rollout and unchecking the use instancing engine option. If you did want a lumpier hedge than this, you can add a noise modifier to the top of the stack and that will all work fine. You can now add the rail clone object to forest surface list. And the beauty of this is that the whole setup is parametric and the rail clone object makes it easy to add multiple hedges and even curve those hedges just by editing a base spline. This tutorial follows on from our scattering on vertical surfaces tutorial and the scattering on surfaces 10 second tip. So please feel free to check those out to see some of these principles applied in a different context. If you create any hedges for your scenes using these techniques or you have any tips you'd like to share for creating these kinds of objects, we'd love to see them on our forum. Otherwise, stay tuned for our next tips and tricks instalment and check out our other videos in the tutorial section of the website.